John Boas Presto Talk Today community. Welcome to the show, Aquaba, to the Espresso Talk Today podcast show. I'm Amma Robin, your host of this great and groundbreaking podcast show. If you are just joining the Espresso Talk Today show, then I wish you an especially happy and hearty Aquaba to the show and to the Espresso Talk Today community. Our community of amiable intellectuals welcomes everyone. We discuss concepts and ideas, we listen to concepts and ideas, and we share concepts and ideas. Nothing is off the table here. This is how we grow and and thrive as a community. Asante sana to all for joining us today. We are continuing our January theme on Black love. Today's show might not seem like an obvious choice about Black love, but it is. I promise it is. On today's podcast show, we have a very special guest. Well, all of our guests are special, but this is an especially special guest. Ivy is a longtime and much loved friend of my family. Well, in fact, she actually is family. Ivy will join us today to discuss a racial encounter that she recently experienced. This encounter happened very, very recently. And when I heard about this encounter, I was outraged at the behavior of the department store personnel. And I, and I was saddened too that my dear friend had experienced such a terrible thing in what's supposed to be a liberal and welcoming state. And in the year 2022, yeah, it just happened last year. So what does this have to do with black love? Great question. And I'm going to leave you to think about that, to think about what Ivy's racial encounter has to do with black love. You're definitely going to want to discuss Black Love Connection after the show. So stay tuned. We are so glad that you're joining us for this important and uncommon show. Racial encounters, sadly, are not uncommon. About that, I think that many, most, well, if not all, Black people will recognize this racial encounter and you might have experienced it yourself. The memory of this experience can cause stress or it can cause a trauma reaction. It could be a physical reaction or response. It could be mental or emotional, but it's definitely real. You're not faking it or making this up. If you find yourself experiencing a reaction, then take some self-care steps to protect yourself. Take deep breaths, go for a walk, or do some other exercise. And you might want to just wait and listen to this episode with a friend. Whatever you do, please, please, please don't ignore or deny your feelings. After the show, we'll discuss some coping mechanisms that you can use during or after a racial encounter. But let's hear Ivy's story now. So... Get into a comfortable position. Take a deep breath. Let's listen in, community. Hey, Mel. Hi, Robin. How are you? I'm doing great. What about you? I'm doing fantastic. And I am with a good friend of mine, Ivy. And uh, Ivy and I were talking and she had some very interesting information about an incident that happened to her. And I thought you would uh, really uh, uh, like to hear about this. Well, I mean, uh, I know, yeah, on ETT, we've talked a lot about uh, racial incidents and racial encounters. Is that what what you're talking about? Absolutely. This was a racial encounter. And I mean, she was shocked by it. Uh, I'm shocked by it. And uh, it's, it's just unbelievable what's still going on there. We're talking about almost 2023, and still we're having these racial encounters. 
Well, let me first say, hello, Miss Ivy. Welcome to the show. Hi, Robin. Hi, Melanie. So Hi. good to see both of you. Yeah. So nice to see you too. And I am really um, interested. I don't know if that, that's the right word. I really would like to hear about the uh, situation that, that happened with you. Would you mind telling us, telling us about that? I don't mind at all. In fact, uh, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to share it because it's one of those things that happened just this past October. And I'm not talking about so something that happened to other people. I'm talking about something that happened to me just recently. Just going about my normal day, uh, coming from physical therapy, going into a a department store and experiencing uh, racism again at my age, which was, that was the shocking part. Not not that I had not experienced these things before, but the, uh, I've heard so much lately about people driving while black, doing this while black, and here I'm having experience shopping while black. <laughs> and it was really, really, um, concerning to me that in this day and age that it is still happening. Okay, I have to ask you, how, how old are you? I'm 86 years old. Well, seven in, in about another month or so. Oh, wow. wow, okay, so you went shopping. And yeah, well, yeah. Tell me from the beginning. I, I just I have to hear this story, please. Yeah. Okay. I was leaving physical therapy, physical therapy, uh, because I had a problem with the ro rotator tear cuff in my shoulder, and I had to uh, stop at the drugstore, and I stopped at a grocery store to buy groceries. And each place I went, they ask you if you want a bag and. And I did buy bags at those stores. So when I went to this department store, I was looking for a swimming suit because uh, I was going to continue therapy in a pool. Uh, but uh, I didn't find the swimming suit that I wanted. And I did find a purse that I liked. So I purchased the purse. And the clerk asked me if I wanted a bag for the purse. And I told her, no, I didn't need another bag. I had a trunk full of bags in my car. Mm -hmm. So she said, okay, no problem. And I put the purse on my right shoulder. And as I headed toward the exit, I stopped at the shoe section because I just browsing. And the shoe section, uh, uh, the lady wanted to know if she could hold my bag, my new bag, while I browsed through the shoes. And so I told her, no, I was okay, no problem. The bag was not heavy. In fact, I didn't even know it was on my shoulder. It was so light. So anyway, I didn't get any shoes and I headed toward the exit. And when I got to the exit, three white women approached me and one of them stood in front of the door, grabbed my bag, tried to grab the bag off my shoulder and asked me whether I had paid for the bag. And because of the fact that she was blocking me from leaving, I said, what? And she said, did you pay for that bag? And I, I, I knew what was happening. I knew exactly what was happening. Mm -hmm. And so I did not respond to her other than the what. But then, um, she asked me, if you paid for it, show me your receipt. And by that time, I kind of collected myself a little bit. And I said to her, if you want to know that I paid for it, you ask your clerk whether I paid for it. And she um, sent one of the other ladies to go ask the purse lady. And I'm thinking to myself, you should have done that to begin with. Yes, right. And so instead of trying to humiliate and embarrass me. Were you still at the door at the time? Uh, we were all three standing at the door. But okay. she was blocking the door. I could not go out. 
Okay. And she was holding on to the strap of the purse, and I was holding on to the strap of the purse because I was determined she was not going to take it away from me. I wish I had snatched it, but I didn't because I didn't want to fall down. I had a cane, and I was walking with a cane to steady myself. But I did feel a twinge of pain in my left shoulder that I had just left physical th therapy. So anyway, um, I said, you're not confronting anyone else walking out the door and asking them whether they paid for an item or anything. And she said, oh, yes, I have. She said, we do that all the time. And I thought to myself, well, you should not be doing it all the time, asking people whether they paid for something. This is a store. So anyway, um, the late other lady came back and said, she paid for it, let her go. And with that, she let go of the strap and I walked out of the store. And I was furious. I was so angry. When I got to my car and sat down, I said, Ivy, do not drive this car right now. You are too upset. I don't want you to have an accident. I had the presence of mind to say that to myself, to calm down. And as I calmed down, I thought, go back in there, take the purse back, get your money back. Mm -hmm. I said, they probably don't know what I'm coming back in there for and are probably afraid when they see me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I took that into account as well. Uh, they may have thought I was coming back in to do some harm to somebody. I don't know. But I went directly to the purse section and asked for my money back. And the lady at the purse section, she apologized for profusely. She said, I'm so embarrassed. She said, I'm so sorry, sorry this happened. I don't know what happened. She said, I'm so sorry. The other three ladies never apologized. They never said anything to me. You mean when they said, uh, let her go, they didn't say, oh, we're really sorry that we held they you up? Didn't, huh? They didn't say anything. Never. Wow. To this day, you know, they've never said anything. So there were actually three ladies there, right? Um, so one of them was actually holding on to the purse. Yeah, mm -hmm. along with you. The other one went to talk to the other salesperson. What was the third person doing? Just standing there. They, they were just the three of them. Uh, uh, the, one of the ladies was a shoe lady, the lady in the shoe department. Mm -hmm. And the third lady, I, I, I assume they all worked there. And I got the impression from the lady that was holding the strap that she may have been a manager or one of the owners, whatever. I, I, just, mm -hmm. I just assume that. I don't know that for a fact. Well, you said that they, they wouldn't let you go. Were they standing in front of the door and blocking your ability to uh, uh, hit the door handle and go out? Or what? how, how did that happen? They, she was standing directly in front of the door. I, I could not push the door open or anything without pushing her. Oh, okay. She was standing there and holding the strap of the purse mm -hmm. at the same time. And what was her we, demeanor like? Because it sounds like it was pretty aggressive to me. It was very aggressive. Oh, it was very aggressive. And as she said, we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who she does it all the time to. Mm -hmm. but she said, we do it all the time. Wow. Wow. So then she says, okay, well, let her go. So they knew that they were stopping you and, and blocking you. And, mm -hmm. and actually even, I mean, holding on to... That this, the, the strap of the purse, you know, which was yours, which is attached to your body, too. Right. That's right. kind of an assault. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah, it was assault. And not only was it assaulting uh, an, an assault, it was almost like hostage taking, kidnapping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. when you don't let someone leave a place, that is kidnapping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They made it clear that you were not free to leave the store. Absolutely. Wow. Okay, so you went back in, you returned the the purse. Yes. You used some of this. Yeah, and they gave you, and then what happened? My money back. They credited it back to my account. And I think it was after I sat down in the car, I realized 
that, that the lady in the shoe department probably had something to do with this. I think she's, because I rem, I thought she was asking me if she could hold the purse just to help me lighten my load. Mm -hmm. But I think in retrospect, she wanted to hold the purse because she did not want me to walk out with it. So I think when I left the shoe department, she alerted the other lady who came immediately to the front of the store with a, some, a third person. Mm -hmm. Wow. So there were there were three people and just you by yourself. You didn't have a friend or anything, anybody with you. No, I was completely alone, but I did not feel alone. I felt I felt that I needed to stand up for myself and react to it. Uh, but I didn't want to I didn't want to be nasty about it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I yeah. wanted to be uh, conscious of what I was saying and what I was doing. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to be confrontational in the sense that you can't do this to me. This is wrong. Mm -hmm. right. And uh, that's why I asked the, posed the question to her. You're not stopping anybody else. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not stopping everybody that goes out this door and asking them wh whether they paid for the per you know, their purchase. Mm -hmm. And then she shocked me and said, oh, yeah, we do it all the time. Mm -hmm. hmm. So afterwards, there was no apology, no, nothing like that from these women? Nothing. They just let, she just moved out of the way. She let go of the strap. And, you know, I was free to go. And then when I came back in, I never saw those ladies again. So they didn't even no open apology, the door. No. They didn't open the door for you. They just let you open the door for yourself after all of this. Exactly. They just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. But I don't think there was any, the, from from the this lady's demeanor that was holding the strap, I don't think there was anyone else I could have gone to to uh, to talk to about this. I had the impression that she was the either the owner or the manager, or, or the top person to talk to. Okay, okay. And I think I bore that out afterwards because when I came home, I looked to, on the internet to see. Um, who I could complain to. And then I realized it was a family owned store mm -hmm. and some of the family worked at the different stores. No, yeah. okay. So I was right kind of in my assessment. I think she was family. Mm -hmm. hmm. Mm -hmm. So you went, you went to your car and you thought about your next move or you, did you feel anything like is, is anger or, you know, what, what uh, were your feelings? Yeah, well, when I went to the car, I was furious. Mm -hmm. I was hopping mad. I said, I can't believe I'm do doing this all over again. I thought in my life I had kind of uh, gotten past this stage because I've experienced so much discrimination in my lifetime that I didn't think anything would happen to me again because of my age. Mm -hmm. I thought maybe uh, people would not confront me or challenge me because people all the time say, uh, excuse me, grandma, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> or uh, can I help you, grandma, <laughs> when they see my gray hair. Mm -hmm. So I never thought that this would happen to me again in life because people showed me so much deference and respect, mm -hmm. but there was no deference, no respect there. Mm -hmm. So when I got in the car, I was furious. I really was furious. I could not drive. And I told myself, don't drive away from here until you calm down. Mm -hmm. And so I sat there about five or 10 minutes. And after five or 10 minutes, I said, get up. Go back in there and get your money back. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And that's when the purse sales lady apologized profusely. She stopped waiting on another customer and said, 
sure, I'll give you your money back. No problem. I'll credit it back to your credit card. I'm so sorry it happened. I'm so sorry. I apologize. And she didn't have anything to do with it. But she knew about it. Apparently. Oh, yeah, because they had to go back. They went back there to ask her if I had paid for the purse. Did that help you in any way when, when she apologized? Or what the, What was the, your response with that? Uh, well, I accepted her apology immediately because she didn't really have anything to do with it. And she did not have to apologize because she hadn't done anything wrong. Mm -hmm. right. So I didn't feel any ill will towards her at all. I was just shocked by the fact that she was apologizing so profusely and the other ladies didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. You know, as, I'm list as I was listening to this, I, uh, yes, angry, I'm angry too, but I also feel myself shaking. And I think because I've been in that kind of situation, I think, you know, Mel, I think, you know, we, we probably all have been in that situation, but it brings up, you know, these these feelings of uh, that are feel that that's trauma and, and all that. I'm kind of shaking. And did you have any kind of physical response when you were in the in the car or was it more emotional or what was it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, as you said, I, I said I was shaking, too. I was shaking and I was nervous. This is why I didn't want to drive because I was so angry and and I was I was upset with myself and this is interesting. I was upset with myself for being angry because I said I you know these things happen. And you you don't get a pass because of your age all the time. It's going to happen to you and so why are you so upset about this? You know these things happen. Mm -hmm. And here I am excusing this craziness that's happening when I should not be excusing it. Right. We're taught to do that, though, you know, to, yeah, to more internalize the, the anger and say, oh, why didn't I do this? Or why am I reacting so badly to that? You know, when you know this happens, just let it go. I think we... We turn it on to ourselves more. And so it's really good that you're recognizing that, but that's not. And I was upset by the fact that I allowed her to block the door. I was upset by the fact that I did not jerk the purse away from her and, and push her out of the way or either keep walking and let her push me. I was upset by the fact that I didn't do those things. I was upset by the fact that I was too calm in handling the situation and trying to be logical and 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 not appear to be quote unquote one of them that always is fighting, arguing, whatever. Yeah, wow. from what, from what you said, it seems like you were you were shocked. Like what? What is this? You know, it seems you were so shocked that some of these responses that you talked about that you know, maybe I should have done this or should have done that. I mean, you you were in shock, really. I, I I think I was in shock. My first words when she said, "Did you pay for that purse?" And I thought about it a hot second, and all I could say is, "What?" Mm -hmm. It's like. What are you accusing me of not paying for this purse? I didn't say all of those words, but that, that was all implied in the what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I'm hearing uh, a feeling of, of, of helplessness, too. I mean, there was three against one there. They did that on purpose, you know, that they the, only the, the manager or the owner didn't confront you on her own. They really ganged up on you. And then she, she uh, escalated it very quickly, you know, without ask, uh, ma'am, uh, can I see, uh, or do you have a receipt for that purse? Or there are lots of ways that this could have been handled, but it seems to me they escalated it and they ganged up on you at the same time. I mean, who, that to me is a, and plus then you try to protect your health too, by not jerking and then ending up falling over and hurting yourself. You know, you were alone out well, there. She, she was very confrontational. There was no politeness in her tone or what she said. 
Plus, as you say, and I say, there were three of them. So she knew what she was going to do and what she was going to say when she came because she brought, she brought her witnesses. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She brought her witnesses to, to have that uh, witness there if I did anything untoward. If I had lashed out or hit or whatever, she had her witnesses there. I had nothing. Mm -hmm. And I, I wondered after I got home if any of it had been recorded, because if they do this all the time and they have witnesses, I wondered if they were recording it. Mm -hmm. I wonder. And I think basically she brought her goons with her to intimidate you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. That's and it did, it did intimidate me uh, somewhat because uh, I looked one side and the other side. I said, what is this? Wow. So I mean, now as you're telling the story, it's been a few, been a couple of months. What are your feelings? What are, what are your reflections about, about this situation, about this, yeah, racial encounter, racist encounter, basically? Well, unfortunately, um, bringing it up brings back all of those feelings of the hurt and the pain and uh, the fact that I was uh, not able to do anything about it at the time. I was not able to do anything about it afterwards because I, I had a lot of things on my, in, in my life that were going on. And, and everything was a priority. And so this became another priority. And it became a priority on many levels because I said, people don't believe black people when they say these things are happening. And it's because we don't always report it. Mm -hmm. And so it, Ivy, if you don't report it, nobody knows that that's going on at that particular business. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows how often it goes on at that particular business because we're not reporting things. Mm -hmm. But I decided that I could not report anything because I didn't know at the time who to report it to. I didn't have the time to report it. I didn't have the time because you've got to sit down and write this stuff out and make it logical and make it sound like some, something happened. Mm -hmm. uh, and each time I would tell a friend about what had happened to me that day, I would get upset about it. So uh, it was a lot of reasons, a lot of things that happened to me afterwards that I was not happy about because I could not, because I did not report it. Mm -hmm. I did eventually sit down and write it out so I would not forget what happened mm -hmm. and send it around to a few friends and even sent it to one attorney who <clears throat> I have an acquaintance with, uh, but it came back, his address, he had moved, so he never did get it in the mm -hmm. mail. And then I said, well, just let it go, because it's, it's in the scheme of things, things need to be documented on a regular basis. They really do. They need to be reported on a regular basis, because that's the only way people understand how frequently it's happening and to whom it's happening and why it's happening. But most people, we don't have time to do it. And people look at it and say, well, oh, that's nothing compared to what happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> why are you crying? Mm -hmm. I can I can still feel that emotion is, is still there about that incident. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's still there. Every mm -hmm. time I retell it, it's there. And we'll be there for a long time. It will be there for a long time. Is telling the story, uh, does, does it feel uh, kind of a, a cathartic or helpful, or does it feel like a almost a re-traumatization or something in between? What, what it's it? both. It's re-traumatization each time I tell it, but at the same time, 
it, it releases a lot of the emotion. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, so I feel uh, good sharing it because I hope it helps somebody else share mm -hmm. their little minor incident or major incident, whatever the case may be, because we shake it off and keep going. But the trauma is still there each time you tell it. There's no question about that. Absolutely. I, I, you know, it brings up incidents that help happened to me in the past on the job, mm -hmm. you know, that I've gone through. Uh, and so it brings all of that emotion back. Yeah, I think it is so important to tell this to tell the stories, yes, and uh, to tell to each other and to uh, to do as much documentation as as we can because this is part of our lived experience as, as black people, and uh, we should not be hiding that away. Just like victims of and survivors of other uh, crimes and assaults shouldn't tuck theirs away either. You know, I was uh, seeing that, uh, you know, Harry and, and Megan, you know, the Duchess, Duke and Duchess of um, Sussex are telling their story and they're getting a lot of flack for, for that. Mm -hmm. But they're also getting a lot of support and people are saying, I went through that too. Maybe not with the royal family or with the press, but I've been through that too. And I think that's why it's so important for them to get their story out. And it's just like, it's important to, for you to get yours out too. It's the me too. It's the me too story all over. Right, right. Telling your story helps others, and also helps you with, with, with what happened. That is something like you said. There are other incidents in your past. Now all of that comes back as a result of this incident. That's so right. So it's kind of like a double whammy, you know. It's yeah, because it's cumulative. It doesn't go away. It's cumulative. You know, it's cumulative for you and your life it doesn't go away it's always there and it's painful it's hurtful it's destructive you know it's uh, no matter how minor when they accumulate it's no longer minor right 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 um, you know um, I've spoken to uh, uh, dr howard stevenson who talks about a lot about racial encounters and how to almost prepare for some of those. Because as he talks about how these in the moment encounters, it's it's almost impossible to know how to maneuver them, to you know, try to protect yourself, to not escalate a situation, to not end up getting arrested or even worse, yourself. Right. Um, yeah, and uh, I wonder, and, I'm sorry, go ahead. And that's exactly what I was trying to be logical in responding. That was why I said one word, what? Mm -hmm. And then I asked the question, mm -hmm. you're not doing this to anybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, perhaps I shouldn't have been, I don't know. No, well, I mean, I'm, I'm so sorry that this happened, but I am also just really impressed with how you, how you handled yourself. Because you, you, you went home, you went home alive, you know, and, there's no way you could get through that without any kind of trauma. And I think you're really courageous um, telling your story and and not internalizing it, well, fighting that that urge to internalize it. So I'm, I'm really proud and I'm just so grateful that you come on and talk with us and share your story with us because we're gonna keep sharing it too. That's right. But, and sharing with us and sharing it with you know, the people who listen to this, it helps them to understand what's going on out there and uh, helps them with their own uh, situations because it happens to all of us. You know, maybe not that specific thing, but something very similar and very regular. So we, we really, you know, th this is really important to, to talk about this and to uh, understand, you know, how to respond and what to do to protect yourself one of the ways of protecting yourself, you know, is talking about it, you know, and, mm -hmm. and getting it out. Because if you keep it in, it just festers and becomes uh, insidious. So, I agree with that 100%. It has to be released. Mm -hmm. yes. you know, because we, even I, we all experience slights 
all the time. Some little thing that we recognize going on, uh, coming from other people. But, but when it's so direct like this, it's more than a slight. It's, it's, um, it cuts into your being, who you are, and how you respond to it or don't respond to it, what you do about it or can't do about it. Right. Right. Yeah. Wow, that's so true. And well, anyway, that's my story. And I'm sorry to have to tell it, but at the same time, I'm glad to share it. I'm I'm grateful that you're telling it because it, it's helping us all. It really is. It really is. And I said I, I think uh, you're you're courageous and you know you're helping helping our whole community by by sharing your story. And so a Sante Sana to you, a very big thank you for coming on. And um, yeah, you're not alone in this. So I, I promise. Well, I did want to say one other thing. I know one of your coffee talks that you had just prior to this incident happening to me. And I know there were three things that you you said to um, you. And I think I was thinking about it when this was happening. And you said, relax, share your story with friends, and journal. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and thank you for that. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow thank you. Oh. You, are, you are getting through and helping as well. <laughs> Thank you so much for saying that. That that really really help helps me. And uh, yeah, that that warms warms my warms my heart to hear you say that. And yeah, the journaling is one of my big things to 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 do. I don't know what I would do without my journal. You know, me, I go with, everywhere with my journal. <laughs> so, right. I know, I know. She has me buying journals. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> I don't find the time to do that. <laughs> Okay. Um, our, our talking is in a, a type of journaling without writing. That's true. That's true. Yeah. So I'm so, so glad that you shared this this with me so that I brought this to uh, to Robin and she says, well, we've got to do a podcast on this because other people need to know about this experience and how it affects you and that this is real. This is happening. It's happening to everybody and it's happening on a regular basis. And it doesn't matter what your age or, you know, the type of uh, challenge, you know, physical challenge might be. It's happening. But we also have to learn when to let it go. Or uh, we have to sometimes put it behind us because we have a life to live, you know, yeah. and we can't. We can't stop with each one of these incidents. Uh, it it would overwhelm us because it happens too frequently. That's true. That's true. That's true. But we can't carry around, you know, like a, a burden on our backs either. You know, no. We have to let it. We have to share. It. I think sharing it mm -hmm. helps. But we, you know, you just can't fight every battle to win the war, it, it won't work. Right, I agree with that. That's true. Well, thank you so much again, Ivy, for being here and telling your story. And uh, I said, it doesn't, it's not gonna stop here, I promise. And um, I look forward to seeing you on another show to discuss some of these other issues, not to discuss another situation like this. I hope that that doesn't happen again you know, soon. Uh, but uh, we we'll welcome you back to the show anytime you're, you, you wanna come on. Oh, thank you so much, thank you. It's Thank been you a, for being here. It's been a joy for you to share and I mean to tell my my story. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Bye for now. Bye bye. 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 This ends the discussion about Ivy's racial encounter. Jumbo community, it's Amo Robin again. Wow, this was an amazing discussion. Asante Sana to Ivy for sharing her story. I know that it was painful to recall that incident. She really brought it to life for us, and she brought up a lot of feelings. I know she definitely did bring up feelings in me. Asante Sana to you 
for joining us today. We appreciate you so much. You really are the reason that we do what we do every single day and that we love doing what we do. We felt that it was important to share Ivy's story. Everyone's racial encounter story is absolutely terrible. We wanted to tell Ivy's story. At Espresso Talk today, we've discussed racial encounters in many shows with psychologists and public health experts, psychiatrists, and even other medical doctors and specialists. Racial encounters are upsetting, scary, and confusing. They can be embarrassing, you know, belittling, and insulting. They can also be dangerous. They're common and they're increasing in number. They can actually be all of the above of those things. We also know from talking with our experts that they cause high levels of stress, which can affect our mental and physical health. Repeated encounters and microaggressions can lead to con a condition called racial battle fatigue, which we've discussed in other shows, and we are absolutely going to continue discussing it. Even the anticipation of a racial encounter can lead to, to stress, to ra racial hypervigilance, which is a stress and trauma reaction. Yes, it is true. Even the anticipation of it can cause stress and trauma, which has a negative effect on our mental and physical health. So back to the question, what does any of this have to do with black love? A lot, maybe everything. It is black self-care. Black self-care is a form of black love. The racial encounter was a threat to Ivy's mental and physical health and well-being. Ivy's appearance on this show and sharing her story were an act of self-care. Her appearance here, her telling her story, was self-care. It was a coping mechanism against the stress of the racial encounter. And yes, it took courage to relive that stressful situation, but she did it. And she admitted that she was experiencing physical symptoms while retelling her story. But she did tell her story, and it was powerful. Actually, I have to confess, I was feeling some, some physical symptoms too. I was beginning to shake and tremble. It was really upsetting to hear this story. But it was also healing for her to tell her story. It was self-care and that self-love. Now, I don't know if you remember or if you heard this podcast story uh, show with the amazing psychologist, Howard Stevenson, who's with the Racial Empowerment Collective, and he appeared on this special talk today show. Now, he discussed several different coping mechanisms for dealing with racial encounters. He mentioned having a comeback line. That was one of my favorites. Having a comeback line, deep breathing, that's just so important. You can do that anywhere, you do it anyway, a deep breathing. This one is often overlooked, practicing your responses to encounters. So practice an encounter, relive an encounter that you've done, not relive it, but, but reimagine it and practice how you would have handled it differently. And he mentioned Storytelling. That's right. He mentioned storytelling. Ivy told her story, and it was healing and empowering for her. That's self-care. That's self-love. The storytelling can be very, very powerful. Ivy also turned to her community to tell her story to, to get advice, to share her emotions, and to be comforted. We were Ivy's community, and community is essential to Black love and Black self-care. Culture is also important, but we'll just have to talk about that another time. Having a community for support, for understanding, for caring and sharing is Black love. 
Ivy opened up to us, and we were there to provide support and understanding to her. This is Black love. Black love cannot stop or prevent racism or racial encounters, but it can provide the strength and support needed to counter its effects, needed to release the stress, to regain, regain calm and peace of mind, to provide a place to tell your story or to go on a full, a full on rant. I love that. But to, to know that someone has your back, that's empowering. I've heard it said that love is the most powerful force in the universe, and I believe it, I've seen it, I've felt it, and it's powerful. Again, I want to say Asante Sana to Ivy for sharing her story with us and with you. We must support and embrace each other through difficult times, threats, violence, and hate. We must also support and embrace each other during times of, during happiness and joyful times to make them even happier and even more joyful and to spread the happiness and joy. As Senator Cory Booker, and I don't often quote him, as Senator Cory Booker said at the Supreme Court confirmation hearings of then Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson, no one's going to steal my joy. No one's going to steal my joy. When we stand together as a community, no one can steal our joy. And no one can stop our love for ourselves and for each other. I am so glad that you joined us today for this show. And I hope that you'll continue to join us for Black Love Month. It's a great way to begin the year, don't you think? Love. Great way to start the year. And you can join us every day to discuss these issues and share your stories on Instagram at Amo Robin L, formerly Espresso Talk Today. Leave your questions, your comments, your reflections, or just anything you want to say. We want to hear from you, community, and we are here for you. This reminds me that we have a special gift for you. We're releasing an, an ebook on five ways to em embrace your blackness. Community is definitely a big part of blackness, but there's a lot more. There's much, much more. When the book is ready, and it will be soon, I'll definitely let you know so you can grab your copy. You're going to find some great information and some surprises, so stay tuned. And if you want to keep discussing these issues, then you should definitely subscribe to our weekly newsletter, The Nomo Beat. Nomo, have you heard that word before? That means power of the word in the Kiswahili language. Power of the word. In that newsletter, we discuss lots of different issues, and really there is never a dull moment. There's lots of growth moments, too. And you can, you can subscribe at the Espresso Talk Today website, EspressoTalkToday.com. If you think other people will be interested in discussing these topics, please feel free to send them the podcast or the ebook or the, sign them up for the weekly newsletter or send it to them first. And there's Buku more coming, too. We got to start talking about issues and experiences affecting us, and we have to keep talking about them. I'm Amma Robin for Espresso Talk Today, and remember, now more than ever, strength, soul, and reparations. Ashe community.